Hello and welcome back to the Land of Unpopular Opinions. I am tired and I feel terrible. <laughs> this is the last week where I am free, technically speaking, so I thought I'd do a little 24 hour, 48 hour readathon. More likely a 24 hour one, but we'll see. I want to actually encourage myself to read more. I feel like I haven't read anything in September. I read like three books and I think two of them were graphic novels. So yeah, I will let you know in a minute what I'm hoping to read during this period and yeah, I hope you enjoy and I really do hope that it finally gets me to read more because honestly I feel like I've been unable to do anything but stare at screens all day and it's pretty much like I've exhausted everything I can do on the internet so <laughs> let's just get back into a habit that I miss and I have no idea why I haven't been doing. <laughs> I am back! So, if everything goes right, we will be tackling this, The Demon King, by Cinda Williams Chima, over the next day, <laughs> probably. I don't, I'm not sure if I'm going to extend it, but you'll see in the title. I am hoping to read this. It's not that chunky because I think the font is pretty large and the spacing is also pretty large, so I don't think it's that long, even though it has 500 pages. It depends on how much I get into it. If I like it a lot, then it's gonna go quicker. If I finish this, I will read The Invasion of the Tearling, which arrived along with this, I think, because I really want to know if that series is worth it. It's hanging on by a thread in my memory, so like, if the sequel is good enough, I'll finish. If not, I'm gonna be very pissed off, <laughs> because it was just interesting enough for me to care to get the sequel, but like, on the border of it. So, first we will be reading this. I will update my thoughts and hopefully I will read a lot of it considering this is a readathon to encourage me to read more. And if I finish it, we'll just move on from there. So I hope you're as excited as I am to finally be doing something worthwhile again and not just, I don't know, staring into pointless media all day. I have no feelings yet, but maybe it's just me who's had enough of beginnings where someone's hunting like seriously <laughs> I feel like every beginning to every book is the same maybe it's just my experience with bad first books in the last couple of months but why is it always hunting <laughs> I'm getting very bad A Court of Thorns and Roses flashbacks so <laughs> I sincerely hope that this picks up because I don't know, the beginning was not something to draw me in, but when I buy a book, I don't quit it because books cost a lot of money, so I just, I hope this <laughs> isn't as generic as it seems so far. It's time to have this conversation. Why is all fantasy? more young adult but fantasy so full of like women oppression and hunting and I feel like everything is the same if I have to read another book with men who are poor and keep like bragging about how they can hunt and women who are like oh but why do I have to be a lady I don't want to be a lady and learning how to be proper women and being property from men and I, I don't know I've just had enough of fantasy being so sexist <laughs> why is it why is it always for the female characters to be like but damn it I'm a woman and I don't want to do what women have to do in this world and every time I read like three pages of the princess POV in this book and I already I'm like I don't want to read about this. <laughs> Why is it always the same problems? I know this is old school. But I mean, it's like, I think it was 2009. It's like old school young adult, but I don't know. I'm just so tired. I think we as a society have moved past the need for very, very sexist worlds, which is why my book certainly doesn't have that problem I've just I've had enough I've had enough I think we've read enough about women being oppressed and 
I don't know. I'm just sick of it. So if this is going to be her plot thread, then I'm going to be annoyed. And the whole, yeah, only men are wizards and they can't take no for an answer. I, I don't know. I'm just sick of it. I'm Maybe I'm getting too old for this, but I know that I'm getting very sick of this trope. So, yikes. So now everyone is swooning over the dark-haired wizard, who is also 16. It's been 20 pages, and already I'm, I'm losing so much interest. It's, let me just read it. Micah was a daring horseman and aggressive competitive hunter. Though he was just 16, his dark, dangerous good looks had half the girls at court swooning over him. And he courts the princess, though she doesn't like him, because what else is new? God forbid that we have a princess who actually likes her suitor and who wants to be a princess. No, it always has to be the... My sister wants to be a perfect princess. I never wanted this. And the hot guy swooning over me. God forbid that I should like them. I'm tired. I'm so tired of this. <laughs> As usual, we'll give it 50 to 100 pages. For the cliches to cease. Hopefully. But if they don't... If they don't, I don't think I have the stamina for this anymore. I can't. Um, I'd rather be reading something that I know I will enjoy than rather than suffer through this. So we'll give her time, but it's not looking good. You fine, take it back. Yeah, if she likes him back, but I don't know. It's still a bit cliche. <laughs> please, just please tell me that patience, the patience that she is referring to isn't because of the fact that she doesn't want to sleep with him yet because I, I don't know just I finally <laughs> misunderstood something and she actually does like him back it's not a chase story but I don't know I don't know why I'm ranting so much in the beginning I guess it's just because I have a lot of thoughts and it's on the edge of being painfully painfully cliche so yeah, the beginning is probably going to be way longer than the <laughs> middle of this vlog, so. Yep, 24 pages in. I've already ranted for like, I don't know, 10 minutes. Let's hope it's not that long. Again, probably just me, but I don't know why it's so gross to me when someone's like, mm, when she turns 16, she is of marriable age. I'm almost 20. And to imagine that when I was 15, I was close to being able to be married. That's just both gross and terrifying. So, again, why the why the age? Couldn't you just age them up and it's less weird? Why is everything medieval? We don't need a fantasy world where 16-year-olds have to get married. Just age them up. Make them 18, 20 even. I don't know, just... Considering that it's weird for us these days, it's strange how all the books still have archaic rules and traditions and <laughs> marrying off girls who are barely 16. So, again, this just feels very both generic and everything I dislike about classic young adult fantasy. So, we're almost 100 pages in, by the way, which I didn't say, so... A uh, more cohesive update will be presented to you when I reach the goal. Why am I talking so slow? I don't know. It's just a terrible day. Alrighty, we're on chapter 6, page 98, I think. See, this much into it. We officially concluded one-fifth of the novel. And first thoughts, it's a strange mix of painfully 2009 cliche and things that I'd like to read more about like things that sound interesting and that have the potential to be something I could enjoy but it's a very very thin line between a huge massive disappointment and waste of my time and something that could be very entertaining and interesting so <laughs> we have to give it more time because for now it's not 
bad. Like, I'm flying through it. It's not hard to read, but it's also not enjoyable to read. I don't like any of the characters. Like, I couldn't care less about any of them, which is not a good sign. I mean, yeah, you could argue that 100 pages isn't that much <laughs> to get into a book, but I would, actually. I mean, Winter Night, Baron the Nightingale, within 100 pages, I would have probably laid down my life for both Vasya and Morozko. So... Yeah, the bar is high. Within 100 pages, I want to at least care what ha would happen to any of them. Like, if any of them died in the next page, I couldn't care less. So yeah, it is sort of a failure, actually. But we're going to keep reading and see if they grip me tight later on. Because, I mean, it can happen. But I obviously probably won't be in love with this book. But let's see if I will enjoy it. That's the question now. Also, yeah, I'm not sure how much longer I'm going to read because it's getting late, I say, as a grandmother at 10 p.m. I don't know what's going on to me. I usually go to bed really late. But yeah, I will keep reading for a little bit. And then when I've had enough, I'll probably write a little bit because every time that I'm disappointed with a book, I get very inspired to write my own, <laughs> which is a interesting mindset to have wanting to fix what you're reading but yeah now i'm just rambling so yes let's keep reading and i will update either tonight or tomorrow when i wake up considering this is a 24-hour readathon i am probably supposed to read as much as i can so yeah see you this is already long enough as it is i am so confused sorry i have candy i am so confused what the difference is between real fantasy and dystopians because like in this book, it feels like a fantasy, but then it's like garbage bins and like garbage in general. Why the word if we're in a fantasy world? And what else? Croup and just... I don't know. It just feels... I hate it when in fantasy worlds they start using words that I think would be better associated with dystopians. Because they... I don't know. They just don't belong in fantasy worlds. Like I see the word garbage and I'm like... It's like if a fantasy book had juice in it as the word. It's just wrong. I don't know. It's just wrong. So <laughs> I definitely am allergic to young adult having very, very questionable worlds. I'm not sure if this is a dystopian or a <laughs> fantasy. Like, actually, just like Queen of the Tearling, that is definitely a dystopian. But it's sort of also a fantasy, and I hate it. When those intertwine, just like, make the extra effort. Just avoid the words that are ours and actually make an interesting world. It could be based on the real world. I mean, all of them are. But don't make it blatantly obvious that it's a dystopian. I don't want everything to be fucking just in this world. So please, can we not, can we not mix reality <laughs> with fantasy-created realms? Because that's really going to make me not like you so yeah there's a tip for you also now i'm just i think i'm gonna finish this chapter and then just i don't know scroll through the internet a little bit more and then go to bed so i'm not sure how much i'm gonna read tomorrow i'm not sure when my driving lesson is so i might have a break during the day but hopefully we'll finish this soon or we will just send it to the gutter just like the garbage she is talking about so that is the cat. Oops. It has been approximately a week. <laughs> One hair change. So many things later. This was supposed to be a 48 hour readathon, but I have no idea what happened. I just wasn't in the mood to pick up anything for days and days. So here we are. I'm reading again, as you can see, and I'm not loving it. <laughs> I am still where I was. I read like another chapter and I don't like the world don't like the dystopian elements how it's not completely fantasy but it's intertwined with things that are real hate that just can't I've had enough and my two POVs there's this bitch <laughs> that's basically just boy hopping and I'm not amused or entertained and then we have the other guy who is I guess a street rat again and I am, I can't, 
I don't even know what to say about this. I am going to extend this into an actual vlog where I compile clips. It's not a 48 hour readathon, obviously, anymore. So I'm not going to comment as much on this. But yeah, this was just not it. I didn't appreciate this at all. And I hope it gets better because so far I just feel like I'm reading a soap opera. All I care about is this Demon King, which isn't even into the plot, and I've like read 150 pages to this book. So we're gonna keep reading because I'm lazy, don't feel like picking anything else up, but yeah, that's that's the update to this very, very random vlog, and let me know if you've read this book and it gets better, because right now I have absolutely no hope for it. Also, this is probably such a random thought, but it only just now occurred to me. She is 15. She's going to be 16 soon. I'm reading a book about a 15-year-old girl. And I'm just... And she's just talking about wanting to hook up with everyone and how many men she's kissed. And I'm here just like... Well... <laughs> I'm almost 20, so I definitely cannot relate to this. <laughs> I don't know, it's just weird to me when I realize that she is 15. When I remember what 15 year olds look like, this might be the most unrealistic thing about this book. And I was wrong actually, this is not a sexist society. Women go to battle camps and everything. It's not that sexist for it to be normal for 15 year old girls to be this experience, but I don't know, I still find it very, very weird. and. Don't like it, don't enjoy it, don't subscribe. <laughs> Definitely not. Probably the most accurate description of this book so far is street thug who can't fight at all. Like, at all. Everyone beats him up because he's 16 <laughs> and clueless. And we have a princess who is 15 and she kisses a lot. That's about the extent of her personality. I know everyone probably already read this because it's old school, but no spoilers, don't worry, this is just a rundown. So if you're in the mood for a chaotic, dystopian, romance-centered, not that strong in any aspect, I guess pick it up. But unless something drastic happens from now on, although it's been a while for the book to be this boring, this is poor. <laughs> so... I don't know. I don't know when I... What's the limit of giving a book a chance? That's my question, actually, because I remember City of Brass, I read it. The ending was interesting, so was the beginning, but it's almost 600 pages long, so yeah, it was a terrible book. I wonder if, like, the first 200 pages of this suck, but the rest is good. Would that be a good book or not? That is a question that I've been pondering a lot over the last year and reading so much crap, so... I guess the halfway point would be a good indicator, like if this is 500 pages, if in less than 100 pages it still sucks, then it's definitely not a good book. But yeah, now I'm just monologuing, let's just actually read. I have comments on the back, or blurbs, or whatever, and I thoroughly disagree. <laughs> we have by Voya, a virtually flawless tale. Not to be offensive, but then then you're blind. Then we have Publishers Weekly, which is an elegant prose chima constructs a complex but comprehensible world with full-blooded, endearing heroes and well-developed supporting cast and a detail-rich setting. No to all of those. <laughs> Hate the prose. Definitely not complex. Not endearing heroes, I don't like anyone. Well-developed supporting cast, not even the main cast is developed. And a detail-rich setting. Yeah, if you wanna know what everyone is wearing and what they're eating for lunch. <laughs> I know I'm being very harsh on this book right now, but maybe I'm just very, very tired of reading bad books. I mean, Alan Moore aside, who is incredible, but I already knew I loved him. I don't think I discovered anything new this year that I loved with all my heart, except for Winter Night. Since then, I don't remember reading a single thing. 
that gripped me as much as that did made me feel things and truly made me love a book. Everything's just been sort of meh and I don't know I guess I'm just missing that true five star feel. Maybe I'm just completely sick of reading books that aren't that good. So I'm becoming more salty but on my I mean to my advantage that makes for better content <laughs> so yes i will be salty as long as i can be but i do want to love something i will say one thing though i love how i'm in the same position so you can't even tell that it's a different clip but about halfway through now and i mean i do have one thought han's storyline is definitely more interesting like i couldn't care about the 15 year old princess and her romantic conquests i couldn't possibly care less <laughs> so unless she proves to have some magic which would be welcome because there is literally no magic in here or anything interesting <laughs> or a villain yet so unless she proves to be very magical i couldn't care less about her so i guess it's back to gangs and street wars I thought I escaped Scott Lynch and Six of Crows, but apparently not. They just keep haunting me wherever I go. And I'm getting very tired, so I'm not sure how much more I will read. Probably, probably an update tomorrow. If not, I'll see you in a bit. Final thoughts that I have tonight because I'm done. But this is exactly like Six of Crows, Six of Crows, and the sense that it's just aged down like <laughs> I might actually be more interested in the story and buy it and all these characters experience and honestly things because it's literally like he was a street lord even though he's 16 now and he's out of the business that means he was a street lord when he was what 14 or 15 what kind of world is it if the gangs are ran by kids it's just not realistic. Just age them up and the story instantly becomes interesting and you believe that these characters are rough and they actually have years to back them up. Because this is just stupid. Just like Six of Crows, you're like, you're all 16? 18 tops and you're gang leaders? Like, <laughs> what kind of world is it if kids are gang leaders? That's like pathetic. And I'm supposed to be worried about the state of the world and the wars and the villains when 16 year olds are <laughs> basically the, I don't know, the scum of the earth, really? I don't know, it just lessens the stake and my caring for the story because here we have a 15 year old princess who just witnessed a gang leader talking with his gang who are all also kids, by the way, it's not like... He was the youngest, so he participated in the gang, and he was gifted. But no, no, it's, it's gangs full of kids and led by kids. I am so confused and so not interested. I think it's very problematic how everyone for a decade now has been trying to shove everything into YA because it sells more than adult. It just doesn't work, sis. It doesn't work. You can't just put plots where the characters are supposed to be like 35 and call it young adult. Like, I'm actually older than the characters now. Maybe a long time ago I would have been convinced, but now I'm actually older than the characters and I can tell how unrealistic it is that all these street rats are like 16. <laughs> and not even 16 when they were leaders, apparently. So yeah, I'm just not buying it and I've had enough of this trend, even though I know this was like... 11 years ago so I do get it but I'll give one thing to Scott Lynch he did that a lot better I think the characters if I remember correctly I could be wrong I think the characters in his books are at least a bit, a bit older so it's more realistic and more digestible that's probably my favorite heist story even though I don't like them but that would probably be my favorite because it's palatable it's actually believable <laughs> and that's it on the rant now I'm gonna shut up and go to my room because this vlog is going to be a million years long. I am practically almost asleep at this point, but I was really doing this. It's one of those 
Mm, the princess wants to be as free as the street boy, and the street boy wants the money and the privilege, but they're going to learn that they have to work with what they've got, and they shouldn't be jealous of the other one. I am young, but I'm too old for this. <laughs> I'm way too old for this. This is doing nothing for me. It is becoming a bit more entertaining. There's still zilch in regards to magic, but I don't know. Not a pain to read, but I wish I was reading something else, honestly. But we're not wimps here. When we pay for a book, we actually read it. Unless the book is like one of the three DNFs <laughs> that I did in the last couple of years. So yeah, we're soldiering through. We passed the halfway point, and I am updating way too much <laughs> for this vlog. I know this is going to be a long one because I'm extending it, but I'm going to try not to talk about this book so much because it's not a dedicated vlog. So I should probably like go lay down and watch Merlin very soon so I can go to sleep. Classes start early tomorrow, so... Yay for me. Got home from my monthly visit to the bookstore and guess what I got? I mean, I had to. I saw the trailer for the movie and I'm really interested now. Everyone I know that has read it has thought it boring, except for my grandfather who for some reason loves it, but I wanna see for myself. And the movie looks so cool that I actually do wanna know what happens before I actually see the movie so I can compare. I am that type of person, so. Yeah, expect me to read this very soon, and I'm going to do my best to finish Demon King today. If not today, then at least tomorrow. It's Friday. I just wanted to show you the contraption that I bought. It's this thing, and I love it so much. It's one of those that you push down so you don't have leaves in your tea, and now it's stewing. This, this is the tea that I'm using. I bought it at Ikea, and it is freaking incredible. It's peppermint with cocoa, and it smells divine. Here we have our mug ready. It's a favorite the black cat when this finishes stewing I'm gonna have another aesthetic shot right away accurately afternoon here we are finishing the demon king i don't have that much left i already passed page 400 i'm on chapter 23 to be exact so if you've read this book i am dying over here it's just it's getting so ridiculously both boring and not believable that i am very eager to get it over with Right now it's sitting at like a low 3, so like a 2.5, but I don't see how the ending can fix it. If anything, it would just make me angrier if the ending now turned out to be a lot better than the rest, because that would make her a very, very, very poor writer. And it's not like she's inexperienced, this isn't her debut, because I saw she had a whole series written before this. So yes, this is an embarrassment, and I will not, not be buying the rest of the books, that's for sure. I'm just gonna chuck this at the bottom of my shelf along with City of Brass. 
and read something that I hope I will enjoy. But yeah, I won't talk too much about it anymore unless something drastic happens and I'll let you know when I'm done and what I'll be reading next and then I'll wrap up the vlog and start a new one because this is going to be like 50 minutes. <laughs> so yes, yeah. Not a good time. Definitely not a good time. I just burst out laughing. I can't. I'm literally almost done. I mean, you know probably why I'm laughing if you read the book, but I've had enough. I've had enough of this. It's causing me a headache. I. <laughs> it's fascinating to be how so many people, so many, become really, really acclaimed authors when they're just so bloody bad at what they do. I am being salty, really, and I realize that, but I've just had enough. I've had enough of people writing bad books with no consideration put into them and then being acclaimed. Just, I've had enough, so let's just wrap this up and then use it for kindling at this point, honestly. I have a very, very strong headache right now, so I'm feeling a bit uncomfortable, but finished it. It's done. I will say one thing, and that is the ending was engaging to read, but it was still bullshit. Like, it took me 450 pages to get to content that is remotely interesting, and it's still not even interesting. This book sucked. Even if the rest of the books are good, I am i don't want to waste my money on this. I have so many other books to read. I'm not in the mood to discover if this is worth anything because so far it's not. The writing is terrible. The world building is terrible. <laughs> the characters aren't even likable. The only characters I actually liked were the parents. Like, Rise's dad loved him. Uh, Amon's dad loved him. <laughs> Willow, she was great. Elena, like, I like the adults. I want to read about them. And honestly, I want a book about Lucius and his time with <laughs> the Demon King. Who apparently, this book is called The Demon King. It has nothing to do with him. And he's not even, not even a part of it. I thought he might return and be a villain or something. or no, Nothing to do with him. This is a very, very stupid name for the book. <laughs> Looking back now. But... Yeah, this was just stupid. Nothing was likable. They're all way too young. I don't I like nothing about this. I'm very, very tempted to give it two stars. Because frankly, it's insulting that this is 500 pages. And that I had to read 500 pages of nothing. It's even more insulting than The City of Brass. Because at least there, the magic was sort of interesting. And I enjoyed the how different everything was because it's Egyptian, but this is just worse. <laughs> I'm gonna check what I gave City of Brass, but I think this is gonna be like a two star. Maybe a 2.5 if I'm being generous. Just, no, I don't want to read any more of it. And now I am very, very tired, so I will set this down and come back later on to tell you what I'm going to be reading next. So, yes, we're done with this. Merciful Lord, and yeah, let's never mention it again. Such a shame, though, because I wanted to like it from how popular it was, but, like, I don't remember the last time I read something that was so badly written just, just now. Dear Lord. Yes, hi, I just went to my bookshelf and <laughs> looked at what I could read next, and I realized that literally everything I have is five to six hundred pages if not more so no short reads for me but decided to pick that up it's been a little while since i read queen of the tearling but now that i'm in a dystopian mood i figured i might as well just read this and it's very long and see if it's worth it <laughs> because i bought just book two because i didn't like book one just enough to be unsure if i want to buy the rest of the series so i bought this for very cheap and if it's good i'll buy book three without hesitation so we'll see We'll see, because it was complex. If you saw my Goodreads review or the vlog, I liked Queen of the Tearling, but 
definitely didn't love it, like the characters more than anything, but I hated how dark it was and how bleak and how hopeless. If this turns out to be even more bleak and hopeless, I might just put it down because I'm not in the mood or something like that. I don't like bleak worlds. So we'll see, but if this turns out to be too much, I definitely will set it down and not look at it ever again. But I want to give it a try while I'm still in the dystopian mood. And I might just read Attack of the Clones to break this up, which is going to be the separate vlog, just like uh, Phantom Menace. So, yeah, this is going to be some interesting content over the next couple of weeks, even though I'm in university now, so I'm going to have a lot more to do. But, yeah, let's not talk about Demon King ever again. And this is the next read. I have no idea why everything I read is so thick. <laughs> but here we are. That about wraps it up for this vlog. I hope it wasn't too long. I hope you enjoyed me being salty, even though it was a vlog about a book I hated, but here we are, and I will not waste your time any longer. So I hope you enjoyed somewhat, and I will see you in the next video.